many ways, the book that I ended up doing was an attempt to kind of create a book that the younger me, the kid that I was back in suburban Ohio, would have found and would have been inspired by. One of the fun parts of the book, I think, is that it sort of explains how, in a way, the creative process works, that it isn't just uh, awaiting inspiration, lightning bolt strikes, and then suddenly it all flows out. Each of the three dozen or so projects that I show in the book are ones that I felt that I personally learned something from, something fundamental about human nature, how people come to accept something brand new. And every once in a while, you can change a little part of the world. The New York City Department of Transportation came up with this initiative that they named Walk NYC. And what they wanted to do was come up with ways to encourage people to walk around the city. Our job was to figure out how to make the map seem clear and legible to people and useful to people while still providing all the information they might need. Now, when I was growing up and maps were something that you kept in the glove compartment of your uh, car, the top of the map was north. It turns out in the age of GPS, people are no longer used to that. We tested this proposition with people where whatever way is up is the way you're facing. So if you're facing downtown, the south end of the map is up. If you're facing west, the west is up, the east is down. And oddly, in an age where people have, you know, a lot of people have handheld devices that have maps on them, a lot of tourists are carrying guidebooks in their own language, still there's something so authoritative about a, a serious, comprehensive looking, accurate map that's kind of uh, put right in the neighborhood where you are, where you can kind of figure out where to go next. So I think it just actually does give people the reassurance to walk on with confidence. When you're working with a brand that's been around for a long time, a brand with a great history like Saks Fifth Avenue, that history is part of the material you have to work with. And one of my designers was really getting into the detail and had blown up just a tiny fraction of that cursive logo on their computer screen. And I remember seeing that from across the studio here at Pentagram and just seeing that one detail isolated and I thought, wow, that looks really, really fantastic. It just looked new, it looked abstract, it looked animated, it looked vigorous. Also, it kind of looked familiar. We said, okay, what if we just took the logo, subdivided it into a bunch of smaller squares, then took each one of those squares and blew it up and used that as a puzzle piece. And it was just one of those remarkable things. I remember literally clapping my hands and saying, this is no way to do this wrong. Every single way you do it seems to really look cool. I found that if you want to make something look new, it's much more startling to start with something old and kind of keep, the, keep something about the oldness of it, but present that old quality in a new way. The New York Times building was a really interesting challenge. The requirement is that every building in Times Square has to have some big signs on it. So, it's, so Times Square can continue to look like Times Square, oddly enough. The ordinance requires you to actually attach signs to the building. It can't just be painted on the building, they have to be physically attached. We realized that if you took the logo of the New York Times and decomposed it really into a bunch of very narrow horizontal strips, you could make each one of them shaped like a little t sideways teardrop and then take those and mount them like that on the ceramic rods so that when you look at them from underneath, you're kind of seeing the projecting parts and they all kind of fill themselves in so it looks opaque from down below on the street. But if you're looking at it from the other side, from the inside of the New York Times building, you look right through them and you're barely aware of them. There's something just so um, amazing when you see work that you've done that has been in your head and on your drawing board and in your notebook and in meetings. It lives that way for months. And when finally it's kind of introduced into the world, it is like sort of a really exciting, fun moment. What I do for a living, sometimes I'm amazed I get paid for it. I'm so grateful that I get to do something that, I, that I've wanted to do since I was a little kid and that I still can have fun doing it.